for dogs in association with the British Greyhound Racing Board. Welcome to the Dogs. This week's programme focuses on the William Hill Greyhound Derby final. We're just days away to the £100,000 final itself and of course the many spin-offs it brings to the winner. We'll have words with some of the connections for these six finalists and we'll look back at how they reached this valuable final. Enjoy the next 30 minutes. Derby semi-finals are coming up shortly, but first we join Saturday's healthy crowd who were regally entertained by some excellent performances on the supporting card. In the Derby plate, Owen McKenna's Agassiz ace was looking to make up for his second round exit and served up a faultless performance. So as they hit down the far side, Agassiz ace who didn't break out brilliantly, showed terrific early toe and is clear by four lengths at the moment from Key Gift Racing in second. There's a further three lengths back to three, Blonde Thunder. As they come round the final bend, it's Agassiz Ace, only two lengths clear now from Key Gift. It's trying to close, but that line, Agassiz Ace by two and a half lengths from Key Gift in second. The £1,500 of the winner final looks set up for Agassiz Ace, who was a perfect trap six draw, but the other heat winners, Executive Memo and Mustang Fastback, must be respected. After the derby plate came the champion hurdle qualifiers and many felt it was the best entry for some time. In heat one, recent Walthamstow track record breaker Blue Meadow Lad was sent off the 7-4 favourite. But it was Jim Reynolds' grand national champion four-handed who proved yet again how much he loves Wimbledon. And we're off running towards the first right and Blue Meadow Lad traps out well, leads over the first right, here comes three four-handed as they go into the first turn and four-handed goes round in front. The four-handed the leader being joined and jostled by Quality Street as they head down the far side. Trouble for out the back there, Blue Meadow Lad and also Trojan Flight. They go over the next and three takes over. Four-handed goes about a length and a half up on one on the inside. Quality Street as they come round the final bend. It's four-handed from two. Kelso's Bruno now up the home straight. They go four-handed by a length from Kelso's Bruno. It's a one-two for Jim Reynolds. Trap three, four-handed beats Kelso's Bruno in second and third there was trap four, Baron Mandinka. On paper, Heat 2 looked the pick of the competition with Springbok champion Druid's Mickey Joe returning from a month's layoff to face Walthamstone money spinner Lethal Rumble and the well-drawn Arbor Jack. Here comes the bunny then. Favourites in one, Druid's Mickey Joe. Crack, away they go and running up towards the first white. Druid's Mickey Joe out well. Three Mustang Hero picked at the first white now last. They go around the turn. Druid's Mickey Joe leading the way round from two lethal rumble upsides. So after these comes five in third, Arbor Jack. As they go down the far side, it's one Druid's Mickey Joe and two lethal rumble. There's little between them. So they reach the third turn. Druid's Mickey Joe leading but taken on all the time by lethal rumble. Then comes Arbor Jack as they come around the final bend. A bumping match between the duo. Druid's Mickey Joe just down in front, pulling out more. Here comes lethal rumble, nails him. Nails him, nails him, nails him, right on the line. The early pace limited blue and the enigmatic Remember Billy were fancied in Heat 3, but it was to be Gary Baggs' plot-drawn Colleen Tom who showed a clean pair of heels to his rivals. And they're off, running up towards the first bend and the first white. Killing Tom is over safely here from three. Limited Blue up into second place to go around the turn. Limited Blue and Killing Tom. And Killing Tom now smothers uh, Limited Blue for early pace and goes down the far side with a four length advantage over Limited Blue. After this comes We're the Biz in two. They go around the second half bend. It's Killing Tom out in front here by a good five lengths and they come around the final bend. Trap six, Killing Tom and Gary Baggs has home and hosed, really attack that final furlough. And it's very tight for second. We're the Beers and Limited Blue involved in a photo for second. A magnificent display of pace and jumping from Colleen Tom, who clocked the fastest time of the three heats, an outstanding 28-11. His reward is trap five in Saturday's £3,000 to the winner final, which looks an absolute cracker. Druid's Mickey Joe, sure to improve for his run back, his favourite. Before we bring you the semi-finals of the derby, a look at how Wimbledon's much-maligned track is prepared. 
This year, there's been plenty of controversy about the lack of winners from traps one and two. Only three wins from 60 races from trap one, whilst trap six is the most successful with 20. Wimbledon's clerk of the course is John Forster, one of the most experienced and respected groundsmen in the business. John works tirelessly to produce a fair and above all safe track. Wimbledon has been his life for nearly four decades. Um, I've been here for sort of 39 years, but I've sort of mainly been working on the speedway and the dog track all of that time, and then the last few years totally on the ground track. And it uh, runs in the family? It does, yeah. My father worked here before the war and just after the war for a while, and he had a short stint back again back in the late 70s just to do a bit of hair driving. And now my son, he works here as well. He's, in fact, he started last year's derby. Stars check them over. He waves the flag. The war's up. But before the derby final, or any race for that matter, can go ahead, John and his team have over six hours of track preparation to complete. First, between three and six inches of the surface is scarified to break up the sand. Then, John drives the tractor wheels over the track to flatten the surface before replacing all the displaced sand from the edges ready for the next stage of the operation, which is known as plating. The tractor tows a heavy metal plate behind it, which compresses the surface ready for watering. The infamous Bowser can spray upwards of 2,000 gallons of water onto the track, and it is vitally important to make sure it gets plenty of water, especially when the weather is as hot and dry as it has been during the derby. I, I didn't really want to go the Bowser route, but with the weather and everything else, we've had to really, because um, it is a lot of weight on the track, and that's why once a month we like to rotate it to sort of six, seven inches deep to break up underneath, because we don't want to get, it's no good having two inches of soft sand on top of a piece of concrete, you want it fairly soft underneath as well. But the Bowser has really helped us because we can get a load on quick and then, then hand water while it's refilling up. As the statistics showed, the inside traps have produced very few winners in this year's derby, something John acknowledges but is at a loss to explain. There is a few people who said that to me, but as I say, I can, I can slow the inside down. I can slow the outside down. But that's not what we do. We do the same from top to bottom, from the inside to the outside. And when we water, you would think that um, if there's going to be any any bias with the water, it would be more the inside than the outside because of, because of the banking on the bends. So I don't really understand why trap one is not doing as well as the others. Um, trap six, in theory, has got a lot further to run. Um, so I don't really know about that one. But we, all we try and do is keep, keep it safe. I mean, my main concern is safety for the grounds and to keep it even. Of course, safety is the number one priority, but accidents happen. And last year's high-profile injury to the Derby favourite Premier Fantasy was an experience his trainer Seamus Graham, owner Michael McElhatton and John Forster won't wish to repeat. You get attached to these dogs, they're, they're lovely animals. Um, but sometimes, you know, it, sometimes it, it is incidents with dogs that get bumped and knocked over and... I mean, that's bad enough, but if it's on its own and it gets, it, it breaks something, it makes you wonder, you start to think, you know, is it the track, is it this, is it that? And that's why you're just constantly trying to dig it up, make it softer underneath so it's not too hard. But sometimes I think some of these top dogs, they are maybe too good for themselves. They hit that first bend so fast, they've got a, a straight run from the 460, or from the 480 boxes, 460 boxes. It's a long straight run and you hit that flat out and you've got to turn left. And unfortunately some things break. And it's not a thing any of us want to see happen. Because it just it just destroys the evening. You just want to go home, you don't want to do it anymore. It's not just the surface that John is responsible for. Everything that moves at Wimbledon Stadium comes under his watchful eye. If the traps need a wash and brush up, call John. But the clerk of the course, who admits he doesn't bet, is sure he knows which dog is going to win Saturday's William Hill Greyhound Derby final. First one past the post. That's all I can say. Likely to be in trap six, do you think? Um, I don't know, but if it was now trap one that won it, 
that everybody would say, well, they've obviously done something to the track. So we haven't. The track will be done as it is normally done. And hopefully it'll be a safe race and the best dog wins. So six hours on from all of John's hard work and how will the track run for the Derby semi-finals? A vociferous crowd settled down to watch Droopy's Marco parade before the first semi and Fraser Black's Scottish Derby champion was sent off the uneasy 5-4 favourite. But he had some serious rivals to face, led by compatriots Blue Majestic and Geldrop Touch and that electric starter Ningbo Jack. Satan, 29 seconds in front of us then. For the first semi-final of the William Hill Greyhound Derby. We're off and running and racing out towards the first bend and Geldrop's touch away well, but not as good as Ningbo Jack. He's out and gone again and Ningbo Jack goes round in front and leads Blue Majestic. Uh, Droopy's Marco in trouble as they head down the far side. It's Ningbo Jack then by three and a half lengths over two. Blue Majestic then comes five. Back in third, Geldrop's touch and Droopy's Marco is last. Stick around the second last bend. It's Ningbo Jack chased all the time by Blue Majestic. Ningbo Jack then by a length from Blue Majestic and five. Geldrop's touch as the line comes up. Ningbo Jack just from Blue Majestic and back in third was Geldrop's touch. So a fantastic finish to the first semi-final. Nimbo Jack holding Blue Majestic and Geldrop's touch to win in 28-76. Westmead Hawk was the star of the second semi-final, but he too faced a real test from trap two. Impressive quarter-final when a January Tiger raced from trap six, while the Irish challenge here was led by trap three, Miniola Farlow. Here comes the hair. And we're off and running towards the first bend. It was a good start from Westmead Hawk, but the pace coming from Miniola Farlow and one Blond Mac on the inside. Miniola Farlow goes on, the one Blond Mac moves off, two Westmead Hawk was slightly crowded, but in a handy position. Then comes five Mustang Oki out with a washing of four Hot Rocks and six January Tiger. They reach the third bend. It's Miniola Farlow here, leading the way from Blond Mac. Westmead Hawk not picking up so far. They come around the final bend. Miniola Farlow by two and a half lengths. Westmead Hawk now beginning to fly. Miniola Farlow wins. Westmead Hawk the second. And Blond Mac was third. So Miniola Farlow wins from the gallant Westmead Hawk in a time just one hundredth of a second slower than the first semi final. Afterwards, it was left to Big Mac, John McCurrick, to do the draw for the £100,000 to the winner, William Hill Derby final. Draw for Ningbo Jack, he'll fly out, take a bit of a middle. It's a bad draw for the favourite Westmead Hawk. He's going to be on the floor. What a fantastic run he produced. But that always could happen, it could happen again. I think bookmakers were on the field against him. Six beautifully drawn. And of course, Ningbo Jack, two fantastically drawn dogs. The favourite's got it all to do now. Coming up after the break, we take an in depth look at the six finalists and hear from Connections. Before the break, we saw the Derby semi-finals and Big Mac making the draw. Now we'll take you through each of the runners in detail, starting with Blond Mac, the outsider of the party, trained by Arthur Hitch for Mark Carroll. Arthur, of course, has already trained a Derby winner, Tico, in 1986. For good measure, he also trained the runner-up that year in Master Hardy and a few years back had third place Castle Lions Danny. Clive Lawrence, producer of the dogs, went to see Arthur at his kennels at Bovingdon near Hemel Hempstead, where once the veteran handler oversaw a large string of dogs, he now just has the two under his care. This was Arthur's finest hour at Wimbledon in the mid-80s when Tico's extraordinary early pace took him clear of a quality derby final field with the chasing pack led by kennel mate Master Hardy. We asked whether his experience preparing a derby winner would help Blond Mac, but he wasn't so sure don't remember much about it to be honest with you it's um you try to keep things as normal as possible what you don't want to do is go and muck something up through a silly mistake and you know you make sure that's just right his breakfast is just right is he the right way and you weigh him once you might even bring him again did i make a mistake and all those things go through your mind it's um because now uh, when you're thinking a uh, hundred thousand pounds that's big, big money. It's, um, and I can see why the Irish should come over. Wimbledon, the track is running definitely fairer. So uh, they brought the right type of dogs. 
Now let's talk about Blond Mac this year, Van Arthur. Uh, one of the outsiders, in fact, will be the big outsider for the final. Is that warranted? Not really, because uh, he's going to have a run on the rails. He's going to go down to the bend. It doesn't matter if he misses the break. He's, he has enough all-round pace to get yourself in, like, second or third on the first corner. And uh, who knows, with a roar going up, where the other dogs are going to be. Now, with Ningbo Jack in trap two, that must be a good draw for you. Well, it, it slightly moves off, and um, I watched a few of the videos, and uh, there's a possibility we might have enough room to manoeuvre around. And then, you know, when dogs start bulking one another, they are stopping one another's pace. And it's a quite a possibility that we might be up alongside. I think we've got more chance in that respect than the wider dogs have of going round. You know, it's um, that's how I read the race anyway. I think he'll run a big race, actually. I've never said that before because I thought I'd make myself look dull. But no, I think he'll run really well. And he has run well, perhaps his best performance coming in the quarterfinals, matching strides with Droopy's Marco. And then Droopy's Marco taken on by Blond Mac for the lead. But Droopy's Marco goes clear. He leads here by a length and a half over one. Blond Mac half these getting clear now is Westmead Hawk in chasing to come down towards the third bend. His sixth. Droopy's Marco out in front. Westmead Hawk just having a problem getting past Blond Mac. But it has a sighter now as they come off the final bend. Droopy's Marco, Westmead Hawk, Westmead Hawk getting on top. Westmead Hawk by a length from Droopy's Marco. Blond Mac, what a run from that in third qualifies. Win or lose in Saturday's final, it's been a great derby campaign for Arthur and Blommack and has possibly put on ice any thoughts of retirement. <laughs> it's, uh, he's lit the light again. It's, uh, no, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, doing what I'm doing and uh, whatever the result now, I, I, I think a little bit of uh, the, the achievement's been really good. So um, I'm just hoping for a big run from him and uh, I think we'll have one as well. Ningbo Jack in two, Charlie Lister's Sprint King. Broke track records at Coventry and Perry Bar, winner of the Laurels and National Sprint. In the quarterfinals, he did a 480 sectional. In the semi-finals here, a 482 sectional. So when it matters, he's got plenty of early gears. As you watch him, he rails around the bends, but he has a tendency to move off. Look how wide he is down the far side. Let's hear from Derby winning trainer, Charlie Lister. Yeah, another finalist. I'm really pleased with it, though, because he's had to work hard, you know, and he's he's showing his pace and getting out in front, and uh, I just wanted to do that on next Saturday night. Pass the winning line first time. He was four in front, Charlie. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got a good early pace. He's um, He was coming back at the death, though, wasn't he? Yeah, but they still got to catch him, you know. I mean, he, he got away, he got clear, and he hung on light, so can't ask for no more. In three is the first of Seamus Graham's pair, Blue Majestic, who's impressed throughout the derby, particularly with this second round effort. And away they go, racing up towards the first bend. Good start from Bob's memory and Blue Majestic. After these comes He Horse Barney in four, Smooth Martin in five. Around the turn and the favourite there, He Horse Barney in big trouble, heading down the far side. All of a sudden, Blue Majestic has gone four and a half lengths clear from two, Bob's memory. A two and a half length lead back to Junior Mechanic in third, then comes six, Senahel Agathi as they come round the final turn. There's nothing that's going to catch Blue Majestic in this style of form. Blue Majestic all by himself wins so easily. Junior Mechanic runs on for second. Earlier this year, Blue Majestic finished a close-up third to kennelmate Miniola Fala in the Easter Cup final at Shelbourne Park. They crossed swords once again on Saturday, with the blue and white dog bidding to turn the tables. In four, Westmead Hawk, third to Ballymac Perez in the Midland Puppy Derby, winner of the Greyhound Studbook Trophy at Monmore and the 630-metre Labrook Summer Classic at the same venue. He's really taken the competition by storm. His fabulous run in the second round, when he came from last to first to beat anti-post favourite Droopy's Maldini, was simply awesome. For such a young greyhound, he shows so much experience. Look at him as he weaves his way through the field at the potential trouble spots entering the third bend. And then, turning for home, he powers up the home straight. He was beaten by Easter Cup winner Mineola Farlow in the semi-finals, but was involved in plenty of trouble at the first bend. This is what Derby winning trainer Nick Sava had to say about the draw for the final. The draw I never thought it would really make much difference to him, but uh, it all depends how they turn the first band, you know, and how near them he is. Uh, we are there and we've got a hope and 
whatever happens. And an easy week now at the kennels for him? Uh, yes, yeah, normal. You know, it's very easy dog to, to handle. It's no bother in any way. So um, we weren't going to have any any headaches with him. In five is the second of Seamus Graham's runners, Easter Cup champion Miniola Farlow. His form has been top class as he showed in the second round. Up go the lids and away they go. Miniola Farlow heading towards the rails gives Debrina a bit of a nudge, but he's got great early Miniola Farlow to lead from Blom Boss in second. A bit of crowding on the outside. Minchel Marvel done no favours and nor was four solid money off the second turn as they head down the far side. Miniola Farlow's got him well stretched. Approaching that third bend, then he's clear. Miniola Farlow from Blom Boss. After these a good four lengths back to five. Ninja Blue as they come round the final bend. It's Miniola Farlow for Seamus Graham. So stylish. Miniola Farlow hacks up. Under an injury cloud earlier in the competition with this cut poor, last year's Irish Derby consolation winner has come through that. A handsome son of top honcho, he boasts great early and middle pace, but has shown a definite tendency to move towards the rails. Is Trap 5 a worry for his part owner? The first fellow was in five, the, the Blue Majesty dog was in five, and maybe Mini Ola in three. It would have worked out better. But we've got to take what we, what we get. We're, uh, we're you've, got, you've got a third of the field, so you can't be bad. <laughs> we have, but you always like a dog well drew in a final. And probably the dog that's best during the final is probably six. Gel Drops Touch. Completing the field, the third Irish finalist, Gel Drops Touch, winner of the Podju Stakes of Clonmel and the finalist in last year's Irish Derby. Owen McKenna's star is perfectly drawn in six. He's only had the striped jackets once in the competition before, and that was in the third round. After breaking well, he showed great early pace to be slightly crowded off the first bend by kennel companion Boada Flight. Good middle pace saw him take up a decisive lead at the third bend and he went on to win going away from Boda Flight and fellow finalist Miniola Farlow. Surprisingly in the quarterfinals after leading he was picked up by January Tiger but significantly recorded his quickest time in the competition so far 28.76. In the semi-finals he was noted running on in behind Ningbo Jack. Here's trainer Owen McKenna talking about the draw. <laughs> he's in the final, it's the main thing, like, he's a good draw. Miniola, like, seems to favour the inside, but, like, you know, they're all there and they're fighting chance, so. The well-drawn Gel Drops touches 4-1 to one with William Hill for Derby Glory, behind 6-5 to five chance Westmead Hawk. Of course, all roads lead to Wimbledon on Saturday for a gala car, but if you fancy taking in some open race action around the country, on Thursday there's opens at Coventry, Milton Keynes, Perry Bar, Reading and Walthamstow, while on Friday it's Henlow, Nottingham, Romford and Swindon. Away from Plough Lane on Saturday, Shawfield stages opens, while the Sunday fair consists of Coventry, Hull, Nottingham, Rye House and Sittingbourne. For more information, click on to thedogs.co.uk and don't forget Sky Sports Extra on Saturday at 8pm for the William Hill Greyhound Derby Final. Join us there. Dogs in association with the British Greyhound Racing Board.